Hello and welcome to earlymusicsources.com. My name is Elam Rotem and there's Johannes Keller. And in today's double episode, we're going to talk about tuning and temperament in the Renaissance. Nowadays, when playing Renaissance and early Baroque music, it's a consensus to use quarter comma minto. Just to check, we took a look at the sources to see what do they have to say. We were quite surprised with what we found. Before we start, here are some things we need to forget before reading the old sources. In order to get a fresh perspective on the historical sources, we should first free ourselves from tools used in the 20th century. One, the use of scents. Scents are based on a world where the equal temperament is the basic temperament, zero temperament if you like. Apart from being anachronistic, it is highly not relevant and confusing when dealing with Renaissance temperaments. Just as an example, a pure third in sense is the random number of 386.3137138 etc etc. 2. The concept of a closed circle of fifths or an uninterrupted sequence of fifths. As you will shortly see, this concept is not always relevant to Renaissance temperaments. 3. Describing temperaments with complicated numbers. Temperaments described with numbers can be manifested only with the help of machines. They cannot be manifested otherwise. Another thing we should look at before we dive into the sources is the eternal paradox of the fifth and the third. There is a principal paradox when trying to make a tuning system, and the bottom line of it is that it's not possible to have in one system nice fifth and nice thirds. Either the fifth or the third have to be slightly out of tune. Check this. The fundamental problem lies in the fact that pure intervals cannot be combined freely. What is a pure interval? That's actually defined by nature and is not a question of culture, education or taste. If two sounds blend together and you can't really tell whether there are two notes sounding simultaneously or whether it's just one sound, it means that they are purely tuned. This stability and calmness of pure intervals can be heard most evidently when tuning unisons, octaves, fifths, fourths, and major thirds. Now, let's try to stack four pure fifths one on top of the other. For example, CG, GD, DA, and AE. Next to it, we'll stack two pure octaves and one pure third. C to C, once again C to C, and C to E. Intuitively, we expect the two stacks of intervals to meet at the top E. However, in reality, the two E's don't match. The stack of four fifths is much higher than the stack of the two octave and one pure third. This difference between the two E's is called the syntonic comma. Without getting into too much details, when we try to tune a sequence of pure fifths, the resulting thirds turn out to be way too high. This is how the so-called Pythagorean tuning is built. As you see, the fifths are pure, but the thirds are very far from pure and in fact completely out of tune. Making the fifths smaller will make the thirds smaller and by that make them closer to pure, better in tune. The nowadays standard equal temperament is quite close to the Pythagorean tuning. The fifths are slightly smaller than pure, and so the thirds are slightly better, but still very far from pure. If we want to have nicer thirds, we must diminish the fifths even more. If we diminish them until the thirds are pure, we get to the quarter comma mintone. That is, each fifth is diminished by a quarter of the syntonic comma. Now the thirds are sweetly pure, but the fifths are not so good anymore. To sum up, it's not possible to have everything. One has to choose what he favors. Very generally and almost irresponsibly, one could say that in the Middle Ages they preferred the fifths over the thirds, in the Renaissance and early Baroque they preferred the thirds over the fifths, and later on in the Baroque until nowadays, the fifths are preferred again. This was part one of tuning and temperaments in the Renaissance. Join us for part two, where we'll talk about the actual sources. Feel free to share, comment and like. See you next time at earlymusicsources.com.